Hello everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com and today I'm going to be showing you the premium SEO pack by AA Team. In addition to this being a guide through the plugin, it's going to be a little bit more of a review. This is a premium plugin found on Code Canyon and it's really in depth, but it's so deep that you could drown on it, drown in it. To the And it's kind of, I don't want to say pointless, but you're going to see what I mean. So I installed the plugin and I have not done anything else yet. I'm going to install the default config, if you would. And I'm just going to import, I don't have any settings really to import, so this should be fine. We're going to install these settings. All right, the default settings are enabled. Now, <laughs> When you get on this page, you are going to be met with a monstrosity of settings. And this plugin is deep. I'm going to go through every single option. Some of the ones that are going to be API dependent, I'm not going to show you how to set up solely for a time reason. And if there are some that I don't enable, it's going to be Facebook Planner because it's depreciated and it's not going to be continued. Otherwise, the rest I will go into. I will explain how this plugin works and honestly, whether I recommend it or not. But let's go ahead and start activating all of the functionality. And I mean all of it. As you can see, as everything gets added, eventually this menu is just going to start getting a little bit more filled up. Now, here's something to note. It has Google Plus Publisher and Google Enhancements. But as everybody knows, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore. But we're just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to activate everything that isn't depreciated, even if I'm not going to use it. Mass optimization, ESP reports. This is very comparable to Jetpack. I think of it as the Jetpack of SEO plugins, but it's, it's deep. Okay. So we have now added every single module except for the Facebook planner. We're going to go to our dashboard and on here, you'll be shown a list of the pro uh, the modules that you can then go in and to configure. You're also going to get social statistics for the website's home page. Now, one thing to note, StumbleUpon does not exist anymore. It is now known as Mix.com, so this option shouldn't really be here. And Google Plus shares should also not be there because Google Plus also does not exist. But that's okay. The plugin was last updated on the 1st of this year, and it's been around for a while. So... We're going to we're going to go down this side menu over here and we're going to go down to each of the settings. Even if I don't set up the item because it needs some API key and I'll have to dig around for them, I'm still going to go into what each of them does. So we're going to select monitor and that's going to give you a bunch of sub menu options. You're then going to be taken to Google Analytics. So with Google Analytics, you can authenticate your Google account with premium SEO pack. I guess we could just do that real quick. And then you're going to have to authenticate, authenticate. We're just going to choose my work account for the sake of simplicity. We're going to click allow. We're going to copy this. And then we're going to paste. And we're going to see if this works. We're just going to select certmedia.com. We're going to click close. Okay. I selected the wrong profile because this is not going to work for this. You come on here, it'll show you audience information, channel information, your top post pages, your referral traffic, and then incompatible data table. It says error unknown address type. I don't know what that means. It probably has to do with it being the subdomain, but I selected the parents domain thing that's not actually being used. I'm not too sure. I digress though. This option effectively just shows you quick glanced Google Analytics information. It's very comparable to the new Google Site Kit, which you have. If you haven't checked out, there will be a video coming up on that as well. 
and Google Site Kit is basically just a culmination of all Google tools in one admin panel, and it's super slick and works very well. So we're gonna go down to the next monitor option, which is going to be, well, you can do Google Analytics settings. If you load up the settings menu, it'll just allow you to change the authorization, your client code, everything else. Your Google Analytics ID can be used to add the tracking, tracking script to all pages. And you can also add Google Webmaster verification, which in all honesty shouldn't be in this section. Then there's SERP tracking. Unable to use Google SERP module yet. You configured the Google SERP service incorrectly. I didn't set it up and I'm also not going to set it up. SERP tracking via this functionality is very basic and it's also a paid functionality. Effectively, it just reads what your typical keywords are that you would want to rank for, and it shows you what your ranking is in Google search results. So you say you're trying to rank for the word like pizza, and if that's a focus keyword on a page, it will show you what that keyword is and where its position is in this stats menu, which can be useful, but you could also do the very similar functionality from Google Search Console directly. So it's kind of redundant in that matter. You then get PageSpeed Insights and it can check every page on PageSpeed Insights. We're gonna click Mass Analyze and see what happens. And it's gonna go through, it's going to analyze every page you have. And then you can even click View a Report which will pull up a report and then spit out recommendations. So it says on this site, I should minify the CSS, reduce the server response time by setting up some kind of page cache, minify JavaScript, and eliminate render blocking JavaScript that is above the fold, which almost all of those could be fixed. These are all good, actionable suggestions. And this menu is really nice. However, doing it from your admin panel is a little bit overkill because you're going to just get a bunch of statistics thrown in your admin panel about how your pages are ranking, uh, performing, and you'd have to continuously do that. You can even go into the PageSpeed Insights settings, which will then spit out the API keys, and you'll be able to go to your dev console, and you'll be able to see a request. And it's all good, but measuring all this data from your WordPress admin panel is kind of overkill. Typically, if you're measuring your website's performance, you don't want to do it from the admin panel. This one gives me a 68, and it says it's because more or less the same errors that I had before, server response time. And it says it needs work, and it shows you mobile and desktop. However, the only finicky thing is the desktop scored lower than the mobile, but there are more mobile suggestions, which is quite odd. It says avoid plugins. Your page does not appear to use plugins, which could prevent content from being usable, blah, 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 blah. In other words, these suggestions are kind of outdated. This doesn't seem to use the latest Lighthouse recommendations. It seems to use the old Google PageSpeed Insights recommendations. Lighthouse is the new fancy tool from Google and it's very effective. I wouldn't really use this in most situations. Monitoring your performance outside of the admin panel will just be easier to maintain, use less system resources, and it's just overall better for you to understand how your website's performing. And then the 404 monitor is a great tool actually. It will monitor all the website's URLs and monitor if there's something's 404 and then it will log it here. And then you can select say one of these and you can add to link redirect. Now, or you could delete the 404s. 404 monitoring is good. It's common in a lot of plugins. Uh, redirection is a common one that people use, and it's a really effective tool. Some of these, though, are from the plugin's own assets. So somewhere in this plugin, it's calling for an image that just doesn't exist, which is kind of annoying, just a little. It's very sad. You can add a link direct redirect. So from these two images, I can redirect them to say the home page, which you wouldn't really want to do because these files don't actually exist in the proper sense you would want to use. I think it's a 410 code to mark that the content has been deleted. 
You can then go into the link redirect, which will show you globally and it will show you the specific content type. So you can do a 410 gone content deleted and you can paste the URL here or redirect it. You can select the type. If the content's deleted and is never coming back, put a 410 and then you can use regex if you wish. Regex, if you don't like or don't understand it, just use the custom full URL and that'll work just fine. This is a very useful functionality, I will admit. Link redirect settings should be in every SEO plugin because redirecting old content to new content is just the best way of handling it. If you go into the settings menu, you'll be met with some configuration options. You can use a safe redirect, which will use the WordPress function to do it. Otherwise, it'll just use the WordPress redirect function to handle the redirects. Either one is fine. Typically, I would just recommend using the default. You can do the default redirect type to make it easier. 301 is going to be the best option. Redirect all pages to never redirect all your pages to anything. If the content doesn't exist, do not redirect it. That is terrible and spammy and whoever suggested probably isn't someone you want to have working on your website. Because if the content doesn't exist and you've deleted it and it's gone away because maybe you didn't need it anymore or you redirect, redesigned the website and you restructured it, if the content doesn't exist anymore, you want to tell Google, hey, this content does not exist. If you use a 301, you're telling Google this page is now this page, which is an important distinction because if you had a page about cats, and you redirected it to your home page, which is all about your WordPress development business, then Googlebot's not going to understand the relationship between those two pages, and they're not going to be equal. Uh, so it's just not a recommended practice. A 404 is only bad if the content that is 404 either exists or it was renamed and exists somewhere else. Those are the only times you'd really need to 301. If there's something that's related to it, so say you had a thing about the top 10 best dog breeds to live with, and you made another post that was the top 15. Well, if you deleted that top 10 post, then by all means, that redirect would make sense because that's inherently the same type of content and they are relatable. It's effectively the same as the old post, it's just more. and Deleting it for that would be totally acceptable, but you wouldn't want to do a 3-1 redirect to the website's homepage because they're not related. And you definitely wouldn't want to send it to another page that wasn't related at all. At, not only from an SEO perspective, but from a user experience perspective, it's incredibly confusing. Then you have the PSP report. This just analyzes how your website ranks for certain keywords and why some websites rank why website why some websites ranks are in the top for certain keywords it's basically just a suggestion for your position honestly you probably won't use this functionality too much it's just not something that's very useful from this plugin, if you're gonna do this sort of keyword analysis and you're needing to pay for something, using a paid tool, Ahrefs, SEMrush, any of the big well-known services are just going to do a lot more favors for you in the long run. Now here's all the stuff that actually matters, the on-page optimization. And we're gonna start with the mass optimization because if somebody sees that their website is unoptimized, they're like, oh, one click and it will do all the optimization <laughs> no so let's go into this real quick i'm going to click auto detect the focus keyword for all now what you're going to see is it quite literally generated the focus keyword from the name of the page and here's why that matters the home page is named home page you're not trying to rank for the key phrase of home page it just doesn't make sense and you can optimize it what does the optimize do? Well, the um, optimize functionality goes through and it generates a title tag and meta description. So the title tag is home page, and if you look for meta description, 
It says, we'll teach you how to build and grow an online business, which is literally the first sentence in the website. This is basically the logical equivalent of using the excerpt module in Yoast SEO or an all-in-one SEO pack. By just generating the first sentence, that's not optimizing the website's content because now all that Googlebot's gonna see is, we'll teach you how to build and grow an online business as the meta description. Okay, and the title says homepage. Now it does give you a score and the score, if you click over here on the SEO report, does offer suggestions. It says this is a bad title. It contains only one word and is less than the recommended of three words and the meta description length is super small because it couldn't generate one for this contact us page. If I go to the home page and generate the SEO report, the meta description is short because it took that first sentence and the title is only one word, home page. So it's just not optimized for your stack. And then it also gives several suggestions that many of which are kind of outdated. For instance, uh, mark as italics or mark as bold. You shouldn't be bolding or italicizing content solely for SEO. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It does give a valid suggestion though that the page only has 114 allowed words. So these are non-stop words, A's, and non-transition or one-letter words. And having more content and copy on the page is always a good thing. Under images, it says the page content has two images, but there are no alt attributes. That's a good, actionable, good fix that should be done. I wouldn't go bolding, italicizing, and underline every time you put your keyword because it doesn't make any sense. And then it says bad for the subheadings because the page has one head, header five, five header twos, and zero header threes. Having a structured headings on the website is a good thing for SEO, but it's also a good thing for user experience because you're saying, okay, this is important, and this is also important, but it's a little bit less important when it's the child of what's above it. But just because you don't have them doesn't mean it's necessarily an SEO issue. And then it says the page doesn't contain your focus keyword and the first 100 words and yada, yada, yada. And the page has no internal links. So internal links is a good suggestion using the keyword in the first and last 100 words, a little bit less important. Um, typically you would just have the focus keyword or the phrase that you're trying to rank for in that first sentence and the last sentence anyways, because it helps wrap up and explain what the topic was about. So mass optimization, cool, super gimmicky. Now under the mass optimization settings, you can change some of the parameters. You can increase the max allowed characters for the SEO title. I don't recommend doing this. You can set the max characters allowed for the meta description. Again, I don't really recommend doing this. You can parse short codes. If you're using Visual Composer, you should click yes. Anytime you're using short codes, you should allow it to parse it. That way it can extract the text. Parse page method can do the post content, which is gonna be the content of the page, or it can do the whole page itself. I recommend only doing post content. You shouldn't need to set the server tar set. You can append text to the meta title if you wish. Typically you just put like your website's title or your business name at the end of it. And when it does the mass optimization, it'll go through, take the page title, append it with dash your site's name. The stop word list are words that you do not take into consideration when analyzing content. This is useful. Stop words are, you wouldn't want to count them against yourself in your analysis. So if you had a 300 keyword, a 300 word article, for instance, no, the wait, this plugin I think checks for 250. So if you had 250 words on the nose, but 20 of them are a, U, and ifs as your stop words, you would probably want to use that as a hint to expand on your content. Because these words aren't, they don't offer any additional content to the user, but they're quite useful to understanding the flow of the context of what you're writing. So this is useful, but I wouldn't go too crazy with it.
And then word minimum characters for use default and optimize to generate meta keywords. Meta keywords don't matter. It is 2019. They should just not be used at all. But here we are. Post allowed rules. Your chosen rules. As your title verify the allowed, you can change the rules that the mass optimization will check for and perform. And you can move them to the right and to the left for what you want to allow. You can also do the same thing for categories and other taxonomies. Now we're going to go into the title and meta format. Title and meta format are basically just like every other SEO plugin. It gives you a default list of format tags that you can set up for the title. So the site title and then is going to be used on the home page. So the site title is under settings general and this is your site title. Now, one thing to keep in mind is since we already use the mass optimization tool, these default settings are now moot because the mass optimization actually edits the content of that page. It even generates the very annoying meta keywords tag. But I digress. You can set up your smart defaults here site title, and then normally the tagline for your homepage, the title of the post, site title, page, exact same thing, follow down through. And then you shouldn't add pagination. You should add pagination for your post titles. And this is because if you have a sub page, say you have page two of an article you're writing or page two of an archive, if you don't append it with the page number, all the sub pages, page one, page two, page three, are going to have the same title. And the problem with that is when people are clicking on it from Google search, it won't indicate to them if they're clicking on the 13th page or the first page with all the latest content. So this should be enabled. Otherwise, the defaults are really smart out of the box and they're just general configurations. Now, under the meta description settings, the site description for the homepage, you'll never really want to use the tagline ever. But that's what you have as your default. If you have your own page, you'll obviously want to write your own meta description by hand. For the post, there is the, you can do the global, a short description, a description, the author name, archives, category, blah, 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 blah. Basically, the excerpt is going to be the description. I would just use the description. Come right here. The page post full description. The short description if basically does through and it checks the excerpt. If there's one that doesn't exist, a 200 character maximum is applied. Just copy your short description and pretty much just copy and paste this down the line, except for obviously category and tag descriptions. Now, for author, use the author description, which can be set in the user profile setting. For archives, there's not really a lot that you can auto-generate for archives. You're just going to need to write them. These are going to be the post year and month categories, which are almost never ever going to be indexed anyways, and they shouldn't be. And then just make sure if you are really concerned about the page number, you can add it, but otherwise it really only matters for the title. So we're going to save the settings. And then there's the meta keywords. We're just going to just turn those off. We're going to delete all these. Meta keywords don't matter in 2019 ever. Meta robots. Homepage. Obviously, you can go in here and you can set up the robots for certain types of content. For archives, it has it disabled for no index, no follow, no archive, and no. Oh, do you... I recommend, in all honesty, that you just uncheck all of them for like the author because they don't matter. I don't think I can uncheck all of it, but the author, but you don't want to index your archives on a year, month, day format. You don't want to index your search or, or search pages. For paginating the content, they should be indexed. And then the 404 page not found should not be indexed. And you get another really obnoxious setting here 
if you want to use the pagination meta robots and pages where it can be applied, some of these settings should just really be enabled by default and some of them they should just be cleaned out because this option has been on the bottom of every single page we clicked on so far. And it's just really annoying. So we're just gonna hit save because we want the author to be archived and to be indexable. As of March 17th, Demos is no longer available. So this tag is considered depreciation, depreciated and we'll remove it in a future plugin version. It is now 2019, almost 2020, and they have not removed it. And it hasn't existed in two years. I don't know why they haven't removed it. They just don't care. Social meta. You can set everything up, which is awesome. You can use your social meta tags, your extra tags. Your code validation should always be open graph. The Facebook app ID, you should set one if you can. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter because while they say it's required, nobody uses it normally anyways. Site name, make sure you put that site name. Your default image should be added, so make sure that you have one pasted right here. Twitter card data, use your website's ad account. You could paste it here. Your website Twitter account ID, add it here as well. You go through and fill out all of these forms with your respective account information and then make your default image. Image thumbnail sizes. Don't make a thumbnail from the image. So this option has an effect on post. So what this can do is it will automatically regenerate your, so if you upload a new featured image in 1920 by 1080, for instance, it will automatically be able to process the image and resize it for the output of the Twitter card meta, which can be useful for optimizing the content of the card. However, it's, it's just another image thumbnail you're going to end up loading anyways. And if you're promoting content on social media, chances are you're already screening social media specific sized images and uploading it as an image and then linking to the content separately without card information. So cool feature, smart feature, but you're almost never going to make use of this. And it's just another image that's gonna get created and thrown on your server. Force crop will force the image to fit to whatever dimensions you give it to. So if you have a different aspect ratio for an image, this will force it to be the exact image dimensions that you set here, but it will actually crop content out. So keep that in mind if you do use the image thumbnail sizes. Otherwise, you just carry on to the next section and you're good to go. One thing that we didn't touch on was the sub options. So whenever you click on one of these, you get more options for specific post types, taxonomies, and the reason we didn't is because it's honestly just more of the same. Basically, the options we set for meta robots under the custom post types, for instance, is exactly the same. But we don't have custom taxonomy either, so most of them don't matter. Under the social meta, you can change the settings specifically. And same thing for the Twitter card, so I'm just going to briefly go through them. Under the general, you have these default settings that we went over under post pages. Depending on your site's content type, article is the recommended for your post. For a page, I personally will recommend just putting website. And then for PSP locations, which is created by Premium SEO Pack, doesn't really matter. I would just put website because it's not going to be an article. You could choose a custom field but we're not gonna use that. Under the categories, tags, you can do category as a type of object, which is fine. Same thing with tags and custom taxonomies. For the home page, you can fill out these settings here to, for specifically. Now, if you chose a static page, you will need to edit the page settings for the static page, which we can do via editing this page, scrolling through Gutenberg, and we'll go through all these settings in a little bit. Twitter cards, again, same thing. The only thing I recommend is for default, you use a summary card with a large image. Same, pretty much across the board. Now we're going to go into the sitemap module. And now things should go a little bit faster because this is where things get really basic. So index sitemap. An index sitemap is a sitemap of other sitemaps. Now, as you could see, it wasn't very pretty to look at. 
We can add the XMLNS schema location validation. Include posts without an author. You should, yes. Enable style sheet. This will make it pretty when you click on save settings and you visit the sitemap. Now you can read it and it looks like premium SEO pack or any other sitemap generation tool with a basic SEO style, uh, style sheet. Execution variables. You can set a memory limit and the maximum execution time. If you click zero, the process will run forever. I don't recommend doing that unless you have to. If you enable compress, the plugin will compress the sitemap with gzip. This should be done. If your server supports it, like this one does, you should enable that. Notify search engines. Yes, you should notify Google and them of your sitemaps. Honestly, just do sitemap.xml because you don't want to spam them with other useless sitemaps. Now, we do have sitemap images and sitemap videos, something that people ask about a lot. Image sitemaps don't matter. You do not need an image-specific sitemap. Yoast SEO, most SEO plugins just attach the image to the post that they're related to. That's the best way to do it. But it's there. Notify search engines, you can go through again, bang, Google. Including, you can add content types or remove content types from your sitemap. For instance, the archives, moving it to the left. We don't really want archives. And then you can say, move your custom post types, move it to the right. And now those post types are, should be in this index. Our archive post, uh, our archive rather, was removed, which is good. And the sitemap-site.xml, which is quite literally just the website's URL, is there. The way their sitemaps are structured is incredibly weird, but it's it's fine. Sitemaps don't need specific formatting. It's more of just a user experience type of issue. You can exclude categories if you do not want them to be indexed. Honestly, there's never a really good reason to use this unless you say have a sponsored archive of posts that were all effectively advertisements. Other settings. You don't really need to do any of these. The archive type option for the sitemap archive, which we disabled, so it doesn't really matter. You can include posts that have zero, you can include taxonomies that have zero post. There's not really a good reason to do this unless you have a post and you frequently structure your content to be, you create a category and then publish the post later, maybe the next day or the next week, in which case that's acceptable. That way it'll get indexed beforehand and you could enable it. Under formatting, priorities don't really matter a whole lot. <laughs> they just don't. The same thing for frequencies. Yoast SEO doesn't even bother to include them anymore because search engines have gotten to the point where they now pretty much determine on their own. Video sitemap. Now, video sitemaps are actually incredibly important if you use a lot of video content, like say a YouTube video. Video sitemap settings will allow you to modify the settings of what type of content gets put into the sitemap. So you can put the video title before the text, which is a video. Social tags rewrite should be enabled. If you have a featured image, nine times out of 10, you'd want the video to be there over your image. So go ahead and enable it. This will add the image, the content from the video, and you can put a video default thumbnail on here as well. And then you can select video providers. If you only upload the ones to your site, you're in the clear. If not, you're now gonna to have to go through and set up all of these keys. Personally, the only one you should probably care about is YouTube. You'll have to go and get a Google API key for the YouTube Data API V3, which will allow the website to retrieve the data and then allow it to be inserted into the page. And then the video meta's recurrency, which is basically just how long the video metadata is cached. Um, think of like the views or the likes or any like supplementary meta for the video. This will just tell you how long it's cleared. You can do every two days, once a week, every, every single day is a great default. Now we're already in the video sitemap settings, so we're going to go to the SEO slug optimizer. Okay, 
So slug optimization is indeed important, but this tool is not very good at it. And here's what I mean. It effectively will just remove common words from the stop. So let's say you have a post about pi as the name of your post. It could just strip out the letter A. So post about pi would be the new title. And that's good in theory because it still makes sense. But if you've ever written an article where your title stems on and the permalink that gets generated is like a sentence, it's not going to make sense anymore. And honestly, slug optimization does effectively minimal when you're using a stop word removal service for optimization. It's almost always better just to rewrite your permalinks to something that's small, simple, and gets your keywords in there over this widespread slug optimization. But if you want to use it to remove common letters, you can do it here and then do like A, U, it. Um, my fingers ran a place. If, and then you can do slug part, remember the minimum number of characters for every slug part is three. And then this will go through and strip them automatically. Again, super generic feature. Then you can do validation tools. Again, these don't matter. SEO insert code, you'll be able to insert code into your header or your footer. Not really an SEO tool, but it's just nice to have. Fixes. This will allow, if you want to use the do shortcode function in WordPress, this should just always be enabled. SEO friendly images. This is something that has always been around for a while. And I understand why it is because adding titles and alt tags to every images is a pain. Image alt, activate the image alt. Image alternative text, you can format it. So you could say use the focus keyword of that article and then the nice image name. If you gave it a nice name, which you should be naming images with a understandable name. So if it's just default one.jpg, but it's about cat, you should name it cats sitting on couch jpeg. That way the slug of the image is optimized and then that would be the nice name as well. Alt tags though are also used for screen readers and that's the more important part. That's why they exist. If you're just trying to use them for the sake of stuffing keywords, you're not really using them for how they're intended. So don't go spamming in here and you definitely don't try to work magic on it but if you just use the nice image name or the title of the post that's going to be fine now you can uh, word pet the new alt text you can append it to the current image alt text or prepend it so it can either go before or after the current image alt text if you choose to keep the current image alt text yes then this option will basically do nothing so if you already wrote image alt text, make sure this is enabled for all the images that you just can't be bothered to go do it again. I would un I understand what you mean there. Just uh, put the title, easiest one. Short, sweet, and to the point. Same thing with the image title text. If you already wrote title text, you'll want to keep it. But otherwise, if you want to have something just thrown in there, this is perfectly acceptable. We actually got flagged by this image on here, there was no alt image. So if I reload it, the alt and the title are now automatically generated to homepage. This clearly doesn't say homepage, it's some girl with a guitar, which is what you should be writing there, but it exists. Links. So link titles can also automatically be generated, which link titles are not important, I would say especially from an SEO perspective. But if you want to auto-generate them, you can. But typically your link titles, when you do add them, should be what the link is going to and not the link of your article, especially if you're linking out to another article. So don't use this. In fact, I would just never use this, never come back here. I don't recommend it. I don't even recommend auto-generating your alt tags, but we live in a world where people are uploading five images a post and it's just not easy to do. Now you can remove in this option, category prefix don't do it this is not really going to help you from an seo perspective long term in fact it's going to hurt you when it comes to structuring your content because what's going to happen is you're going to have a category and you're going to either want to create a page 
or you're going to want to create an article and the slug will end up being exactly the same and then you're just going to have all sorts of issues. And we already looked at this. And then there's the local SEO. Local SEO is quite easy. If you have multiple locations, you can use the PSP location over here. I would just rename this to be locations, not location, because there's no reason to have that. You'll want to include your address. And if you have a Google Maps API key, it can output an API key on there. And then it gives you a nice doc that's completely outdated for how the new interface is to get that key. Very useful functionality. Every site that has multiple locations, or every business rather, should be using some sort of local SEO plugin. Yoast SEO has a premium version that does just this kind of functionality. Google Publisher. This does not matter anymore. If you're still using any functionality like this, Remove it. Google Plus does not exist, period. Google Enhancements. What are Google Enhancements? You can enable the site link search box meta. This should be enabled by default. And then you can enable the social profile markup, which is comparable to the social settings in Yoast SEO. What you'll do is you'll change the type to organization if you're operating as a business, or if it's a personal blog, you'll run it as a person. You'll give the name of the organization and then you'll start pasting in your social media profiles and then it will output that schema onto the page. Everyone should do this. Every plugin that is an SEO plugin should have this functionality just baked in. Off-page optimization. Now let's go over here. This is not a useful setting. In all honesty, I would just remove it. Look at that, it has PHP notices. I don't even know where they're coming from. I didn't even know I had PHP logging on, and yet here we are. Plugin, not very good. I'm just going to say that right now. Whoever promoted this when it first came out, they lied because the dev team has not been maintaining it very well. But I digress. We move past our PHP errors, and this page is just a glorified list of share counts from social networks, except StumbleUpon, which does not exist, and Google+, Plus, which also does not exist, and yet they still at listed here, so that way it looks like there's a lot more going on. Keeping track of social shares is important, but social engagement is more important. You should be monitoring how engaging your posts are on your social media profiles. If you publish a post on your Facebook page, you'll want to monitor if it's getting clicks, if it's being liked or commented on, and then you want to engage with the audience. That's infinitely more useful than knowing that your contact us page had one pin. Now, you can go in here and modify the settings, social stats for buffer, Google+. Plus. We're going to turn off Google+. Plus. I'm just tired of seeing it. And then you can enable a social toolbar, which is floating or onto the left of your content. I don't like this setting either. I don't think SEO plugins should be bundling share toolbars in their settings. But now that we turned off Google+, and it doesn't look like it matters for here, I think it only affects the dashboard. Nope, I have no idea what it turned off. That is embarrassing, but so is that option. Moving on, Link Builder. Link building is important. Internal linking, I always, always, always see websites that do a terrible job at linking to other pages on your web. Linking to pages on your own website is one of the easiest ways that you can increase your traffic, reduce your bounce rate, and increase the ranking of pages. And yet nobody seems to do it because it is time consuming. If you are an editorial website, for instance, Linking to a category, if you mention what, so let's say you write about tech news. I have a website that does that as well. And let's say that you write an article about Teslas and you, write, you mentioned Tesla two sentences in and you have a category dedicated to Tesla. You should link to that category because then you tell Google, hey, this content's related. And then it also shows it, hey, all this content's related. And then you, under, then you get a deeper internal linking web, if you would, which can help. 
SEO auto links, and I think there's another one called link something. Anything that auto generates links is either going to do one of two things. It's not going to understand context or it's going to just look spammy because what's going to happen if you type in your phrase and then you give it a URL, let's see if I can find a word on here. Um, I'm going to just type in your, and then I'm going to link it to this home page. And you're going to see what I mean here in a minute. I'm going to click verify founds. It found six posts and pages in which this text was found. Now I could replace the text and then I, or I could just link it. Now you could do a max replacement, which is say only link it one time, but we're going to do all just to illustrate. We're going to leave everything the same. And then I'm just going to click add this new link. It now just went through and edited on the home page, preferably. There you go. Every time I said the word your, it now links to the home page. Very good SEO. Very good user experience. Just kidding. Don't do this. These tools are just shortcuts and they're not good shortcuts because there's only so much that it can understand. It can look for an iteration of a word one time, but if there's text around it, it doesn't understand what you're talking about. If you wrote a post about Nikola Tesla, but you also write about Tesla automobiles, you don't want to be linking the Tesla in Nikola Tesla to your automobiles archive. It doesn't make sense. Context is important and link building tools don't understand it. But we are moving on. Miscellaneous, kind of weird because we already went through these settings and they're in another spot. Advanced setup. Now, I'm not going to go through all these because we're already like 46 minutes into this, but this is useful. Having a file editor in your SEO plugin is so important and nobody ever thinks to add one except for like Yoast SEO who's had it forever but it's buried under the tools menu under another link but having this ability to just quickly modify your robots.txt and adding your site map or removing rules or just that quick functionality is really useful w3c validator we're going to run this but I know it's not going to like this page so W3C validation is always one of those things that people go back and forth on whether it matters. And I don't think that it's really important because you're going to have pages that are just not valid. You're going to have a, for instance, if you use um, async CSS and you load all the CSS asynchronously and what's going to happen is the content is just going to have an error or you have a duplicate ID on a CSS file and you're just spitting out errors and we're going to click this and it's cool that it goes through every single page because being able to quickly get all the validation errors in one spot, super convenient, but it only matters if they mean something. So we're going to come over here. Okay. The type attribute is unnecessary for JavaScript resources. The type attribute is unnecessary for the style attribute. All these suggestions it's given so far are worthless. Here we go. The element style is not allowed as a child of the element body in this context. It looks like this style is also empty. So maybe that should be fixed. It won't break anything, but every other warning is just about it being script type equals text slash JavaScript. It does not matter. What would you do? And the only thing that says it's valid is a post that it can't access. There should definitely be some logic to know if a post is drafted that it can't check it. So look, the SEO insert code is back in a third spot. Very annoying. Tiny compress. So unable to use the tiny compress. See here for more details of fixing it. Basically the tiny compress module will compress your images by using tiny png you'll need an api key from them to get it set up Tiny png is only free for like the first like i think it's only a couple images every month you could upload them and compress them automatically but we've already done reviews on a plugin such as auto uh, u image optimizer and wp smush on how to compress your images and convert them which are a lot more in depth Tiny png though is a great service
So as you can see, you can go in here, set everything up, read through the weird settings, and be done with it. Typically, I recommend that all images are compressed. So the fact that by default, it only compresses the first image is kind of unusual. We'll always shrink the original file and optionally we can compress the other image sizes created by WordPress. Every image should be compressed. And then we can go to the minify settings. Minify settings, you wouldn't really expect to send an SEO plugin. It minifies your CSS and your JavaScript, which are kind of related to SEO. But this isn't an effective setting. This isn't an effective tool, even remotely. This options panel is cluttered, it's confusing, it doesn't seem to really work. Exclude. This option doesn't really make any sense to me. I guess you can, no. Does it minify anything? Is it minifying something? Let's see. Okay, yeah, it does look like it did minify and combine it. No, it looks like it just minified them. It also changed all of their IDs. It also looks like it doesn't do anything for Google Fonts. And it says that this CSS is inlined that was minified, but it most certainly is not. It's taking up all this extra little white space. This is what happens when an SEO plugin tries to do way too much. You can now also go in here and enable excluding of your asset list. Don't use this, just use auto optimize or literally any other performance plugin. Don't try to do everything all in one. So we can come over here, view all the modules and select the capabilities, but we're going to come back and we're going to talk about which modules you should actually be using because we've dug in through and I've criticized a lot of the settings. And there are a lot of them. Which ones do would you recommend using? Link Builder is annoying, but if you're intelligent and you really spend time optimizing and phrasing and researching your content and how you write posts, it can be useful. Should be enabled. Google Analytics, turn it off. You'll never use it. Link redirect should be enabled. Minify, use any other optimization plugin. Social stats, get rid of it. W3C Validator, it's cool and gimmicky, but you'll never use it long-term, get rid of it. Capabilities, you'll never use it, get rid of it. Cron jobs, they can't be deactivated, but hey, they're there. File editor, recommend keeping it on. If you don't have to edit anything ever and you wanna make your site more secure, disable it. This site, for the sake of understanding its content, doesn't need it, so we're gonna de deactivate it. All right, file editor is gone. Google Plus Publisher, turning it off, doesn't exist anymore. Google Plus Enhancement, keep this enabled because this isn't just for Google Plus. It actually allows schema markup, so keep this enabled. PHP Insights, don't run this from your admin panel. Local SEO, use it if you have actual business locations, otherwise you turn it off. This website, I'm just gonna pretend it does. Monitoring your 404s, this is useful. Mass optimization, never use this, ever. It is an SEO sin. PSP report. The report is cool. The premium SEO pack report is kind of cool, but honestly, use it. never use it. And any tool that you pay for, like Ahrefs or SEMrush, will just be a lot better. Rich snippets. Keep them enabled. SEO friendly images. You shouldn't use this. But there are a lot of you in the crowd who've never touched an alt tag in your life. If you get this set up reasonably, then it should be acceptable. It's better to always write SEO friendly alt tags in the first place. SERP tracking. Don't use this. It's a waste of resources. It's quite bulky. Sitemap. Obviously, you should keep your sitemap. Tiny compress. No. Title and meta format should be enabled. And then there are the dashboard and default. So now we've disabled all the worthless junk. The admin panel still doesn't make any sense to me because the social stats still exist and Google Analytics exists despite me turning them all off. But we are here. What can you do? 
The plugin will also list its cron jobs, except for the ones that we've deleted. And it recommends we're setting up a real cron job. I recommend setting up a real cron job as well because cron real cron jobs are just more efficient and they're more reliable. So overall, premium SEO pack version 3.1.9. Thoughts? This plugin seriously needs an update. There are just useless tools. I got a PHP error for some unknown reason. I have this social statistics thing that I turned off the social, I thought, and it's still here. The Google Analytics nonsense is here, but I did turn that off. I have Google Plus enhancements, but it's actually just Google enhancements. They need to just switch that logo. First of all, they need to update the logo because Google logo changed a long time ago. They need to remove the Google Plus share nonsense because it just doesn't exist. The admin panel just has so much functionality and some of it's just linked in so many places that it makes it difficult to follow. And then, in all honesty, it's just kind of weird. So we're going to come over to here and I'm going to show you what it's like working with this plugin in the back end. Oh, I guess I turned off the ability to edit my meta titles and whatnot on the page. Hooray. Which functionality do you think that was? Maybe it was the mass optimization? Maybe? Let's find out. Since this isn't really well documented in its plugin interface, why is the mass optimization what controls the actual settings for the individual this page. So you come over to here and okay, your focus keyword, you can edit the focus keyword and I would enable this to anything that's not this. And then it says multi-focus keyword, you can edit multiple keywords up to a maximum of 10, which is good. You can put meta keywords, delete these. Meta keywords should not be enabled anywhere, ever. They just don't work. They don't matter anymore, but the functionality is in here. There's a lot of functionality in this plugin for things that just don't exist anymore. And I had the same gripe with all-in-one SEO pack for the longest time. They had a bunch of functionality in the plugin for things that just didn't exist anymore. The homepage will teach you how to build a growing online business. It stole that from the first sentence. You can write it here and then you'll go back to the dashboard and it'll give you the new recommendations. What really matters is the websites, and I guess the plugins recommendations. The summary analytics really gives an old school Yoast SEO vibe. And if you look over here even, you have the SEO score kind of over here. It's kind of, it feels all out of place. And I'm having a hard time liking it. The SEO title contains one allowed word, which is less than the minimum of three words. This is a good suggestion, but it's kind of like a duh suggestion. Obviously, the more words you put in your SEO, in your page title is going to be better. Great. The page title contains eight characters. So hold on, hold on. Over here, we've got three recommendations for the title. The SEO title contains between five and 70 characters. Also, it begins with your focus keyword. Okay. Great, the homepage title contains eight characters and it's between five and 70, which is a recommended interval. Great, the page titles begins with your focus keyword. Okay, so these two are basically saying the exact same thing. And then the SEO title contains one allowed word, which is less than the recommended minimum of three words. So it's great because it's between the five and 70 characters recommended, but it's bad because it only allows one word when it should be three. How would you get five characters using three words that are also not the stop words? I, I think that's really difficult. So that's useless. But let's take a look. Uh, bad. The page meta description contains 57 characters, which is less than the recommended of 70. Good suggestion. Great. The page meta keywords contain your focus keyword. Meta keywords don't matter. This should go away. Bad. The focus keyword does not appear in the, in the page permalink. This is good because if it's analyzing your focus keyword, the focus keyword should be in the permalink. This is a good suggestion. Bad. 
the focus keyword does not appear in the page content first paragraph. Again, it's a good suggestion just from a logical standpoint. Whatever you're talking about and is the main focus of the text should obviously appear towards the beginning of your text. Great, your web page doesn't contain any embedded content, iframe, object embed, or HTML5 video. I'm super confused about this. If you embedded a YouTube video, it's good for the YouTube aspect. I don't understand this suggestion. I think it should not be there. Bad, the page contains 114 allowed words, which is less than the recommended 250 words. Good suggestion. I would recommend it's bumped to 300, but other than that, good. Bad, the page contain content has two images, but zero images had alt, alt tags with the focus keyword. All images should have alt tags, regardless of it having the focus keyword in it or not. Bad, the page content has no bold elements. Bold elements don't matter. Neither do italicized elements and neither do underlined elements. If I did this, I'm pretty sure it would just get annoyed and say that the focus keyword wasn't in there. But ultimately, having those elements is good from a structural standpoint, but they're by no means a requirement for having good SEO. Bad, the page content has one H1 tag 5, H2, and 0, H3. The problem with all the scores being good or bad is that that's kind of an in-between. Not having an H3 subheading isn't bad, but it also goes on to say, and zero of those tags contain your focus keyword. Your focus keyword, it should really be focus key phrase at this point, but not being in there isn't a deal breaker if it is synonymous with the key phrase or keyword but that's definitely something that should be looked at. But as far as requiring an H3 or an H2 or an H1, heading tags don't matter much for your SEO in 2019. They really don't. Bad, the page content doesn't contain your focus keyword in the first 100 words. That's a redundant one from one that was really up towards the beginning that mentioned it wasn't in the first paragraph. Yep, here he goes. Bad. The focus keyword does not appear in the page content first paragraph. So again, another redundant suggestion. Bad. The page content doesn't contain your focus keyword in the last 100 words. From a structural standpoint, that just makes sense. I doubt it really matters from a true SEO perspective, but whenever you have a subject of what you're writing about, you typically want it to be one of the first and the last things you talk about. Bad. The page content has no internal links. Good suggestion. There should be internal links to other pages. Great, the page content doesn't have any potential competing links which contains your focus keyword. So this does matter, but it's a little bit more complicated than the way it's saying. When you have multiple key keywords that you're trying to rank for, and you have two pages that are ranking for, a key, for the same keyword, you're basically just trying to compete with yourself at that point. And by linking to that other page from that page, you're saying, these pages are related. Well, they're basically trying to rank for the same thing. So you have to ask yourself why you're trying to rank for the same keyword or key phrase on multiple pages. Sometimes if you just use a poor keyword choice, like homepage, let's say you wrote a post about um, uh, Tesla's newest software update for their vehicles, for instance, you wouldn't want to set your key phrase or your keyword as Tesla because you'll never rank for the word Tesla. That's not what you're trying to rank for. You're trying to rank for something along Tesla's latest software update. So this can get super confusing on this suggestion if you don't understand how the key phrase works. And then finally, bad, the keyword density is 0%. That's just kind of a obvious suggestion. Whatever the phrase or word that you're trying to rank for, it should obviously be included in the text. I don't think though that it needs to hit some specific level of keyword density to be SEO friendly. And that number is always different and everybody has a different opinion, but obviously it should appear in the content multiple times, but while also not being spammy. Otherwise, everything else in here is just multiple tabs for doing the easy task like here we go, the meta. What's this page status tab? Okay, this is basically all those suggestions, but with the colorful dot. Social settings. 
basically just like Yoast SEO. This is really only for Facebook and the open graph based networks, Twitter cards. And then advanced SEO, which is just controlling your meta robots and whether it's included in the sitemap. There we go. There we have it. Everything an hour later about premium SEO pack. Can I recommend this plugin? No, I cannot recommend it. My problem with this plugin stems from its really confusing user interface, features that just don't make a lot of sense, and just random things that are in there and that can't be disabled. Facebook Planner has been depreciated for a while, apparently, and yet here we are. This module allows you to post your content to Facebook. And, but then there's weird things like Google Plus Publisher in there that just don't work. The mass optimization controls the optimization for all your posts for some reason. So you're stuck using that feature even though you never want to hit the optimize automatically button because then it's not optimized and you have to go back and fix it again. Then there's the tiny compression module. There's just so much stuff and it does it all in a really poor user interface. Its price is good. It's too good. It's so cheap that it makes the product seem cheap. At like 44 bucks, it's a steal for how much functionality is in here. For the functionality that really matters though. Otherwise, you just got a ton of stuff in here for the sake of there being a lot of stuff. So what would I offer for the developers? Streamline the user interface. Having all these modules is great and all, but some of them just don't need to be A, listed, or B, just included on here. Why does it list settings as a module when you can't turn it off? Why would you turn the settings off? Even if you could, why would you turn the settings off? Why, why is there a modules manager under module? It doesn't make sense. And then there are things like server status. Okay, I wouldn't really need that in an SEO plugin, but it's enabled by default for some reason. And then I could just go on and on and on, but it's really just poor user interface coupled with features that don't matter anymore. Looking at you, Google Publisher. And it's so much stuff. It's just way more than you'd ever need. And I don't feel like as the end user, you benefit from them. You say you go through and you set up the W3C validator. You go in there, you run it against all your pages. Are you really going to sit there and remove all the type errors for your styles and your JavaScript? And even if you do, will it matter? The answer for both of them is no, it won't matter. And there's nothing wrong with the functionality being in here. But the problem is, is it's in such a really bad user interface that it makes it difficult to get anything useful. If you want to look at an example of a plugin that does a really good user interface, look at Google Site Kit. Brand new, only does the basics. Google Search Console, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager slash Optimize, and then uh, like AdSense, I think. Really simple plugin. It optimize, brings in all the Google services in a super convenient user interface, and it's easy to follow. I would need a search engine for this plugin to find all of its settings, and then you turn things off, and then you're still stuck with them, like the social statistics and the Google Analytics thing that doesn't exist anymore, and you're just left scratching your head as to why they're all there. And I'm not going to put in the purchase code because I'm going to install this plugin after this video. But this, I feel like this should be at the top. They should be at the top of the page to say, hey, put in your purchase code. You paid for this, right? It should be there. But all of this stuff in just a really, and then you have items that are in like one, two, or three different menus, and then it gets really confusing. Not a good plugin. Could it be them? Oh yeah, no doubt. It just, it needs work. It's just, and this is, uh, from what I understand, the much better version of the user interface. When it first launched, the user interface was much, much worse. But you have like a second collapse. You, you First of all, you collapse this menu, and then you can collapse this menu, and then it's just like you have so much stuff going on, and it's just ridiculous. And I 
can't recommend this plugin. I really can't. I just, I don't understand. So like, let's, let's briefly look through some of these logs. Okay. Last updated on January. Fine. Google Analytics module. Fix some issues. Okay. So fix some autocomplete keywords. Okay. Okay. Fix the Facebook social tags URL issue. Okay. Page feed module. On. Remove depreciated module. Facebook planner. Did you though? Because I'm still getting flagged for it under here, under the modules manager telling me I can activate it. If I activate it, what does it do? Is it under off page optimization? Is it under miscellaneous? I would hope it was under miscellaneous. No? On page? Maybe? Who knows? There's no simple way of finding anything. Okay. Page speed module. Operation was blocked when you mass analyze and some pages return zero score. Okay, that's a good fix. Remove backlink builder module. Yay. I guess that just like automatically generated backlinks, maybe through directories. Sounds like that would have been useful functionality on the most basic level. Depreciate the Facebook planner module. Okay, so why was this? You know what, it's fine. Fix, they fixed some stuff. All right, fix more again. Add a new module, Google enhancements. Good update. This should be enabled by default though. There should be a filter to remove the search box. Who doesn't want the search box on their website in Google? Do you know how useful that is? Very. And then a bunch of other fixes. I just can't recommend this plugin, guys. It's it's way, 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 way. Too much. User interface is too much. The cost is too good. They They couldn't support this at this cost. They couldn't. It just needs a user interface overhaul. It needs its options simplified. Having options just for the sake of having a ton of options doesn't make sense. This dashboard needs to be overhauled. I can't figure out how to get rid of this social statistics even though I turned that off, I, it's still here. I turned this off and now it's just a blank box. I don't understand it. Can't recommend the plugin guys. If you have any questions about the plugin, I'll try to answer it but in all honesty, wait, hold on. Facebook planner tasks over here. Why is this menu different? You're unable to use this module yet. I'll oh, see here for more details. That at the module here. But they said they removed it. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one, and bye.